Good afternoon crafters, we are live. My name is Hannah Roxbury and I am the brand ambassador for Carnation Crafts and this afternoon we're going to be bringing you a Facebook live demonstration talking you through and showing you how we're going to create a double easel card using the Teenage Kicks uh, die collection from Crafter Select. So it's a brand new uh, Crafter Select die range uh, consisting of cool vibes. One die set here and also the controller here. So this is fabulous. Now we've named the bundle Teenage Kicks because we've been asked so many times for um, die sets that would be um, sort of more appropriate for maybe teenagers or, you know, gamers generations, things like that. However, <laughs> if you guys are anything like me, you'll know gaming spans all generations so um i for myself am a huge huge game computer game fan so this would be ideal for making cards for myself or my husband simon he loves his computer games as well so really it's about that sort of thing uh, not just computer games we've got the headphones in here as well and they're sort of wonderfully intricate uh, notes and things like that flowing out of the headphones there as well so again another little bit of fun perhaps you've got someone who's a musician in your family um, perhaps it's someone who loves dancing for example it's that sort of feel for these two now crafter select dies if you're not familiar with them are web exclusive which means they're only available from our website carnationcrafts.co.uk these actually launched uh, a week ago today as deal of the day so they were on a special bundle deal for 24 hours only but they are still available as individual die sets there and we're going to be talking you through how we're going to create a card with this um and i've got a few little updates as well to share with you but we'll get to those in the in the age demonstration what we'll do for the moment it's what we always do with the Facebook Live is give it a few moments just so everyone who wants to join us live can find us and do so. Uh, lots of people tuning in already. So thank you guys for joining me on this rather wet and windy afternoon. It's definitely heading towards those colder sort of winter months, isn't it? Uh, Julie's here. Hi, Julie. Linda's here as well, as well as Jill. Uh, we've got Yvonne and Amanda. It's a familiar name. I see Amanda pop up on quite a lot of our lives. So thank you for joining us. Uh, Sam's here. Uh, Diane. Lindsay from the DT. Hi, you, Lindsay. Hope you're keeping well. Uh, Suzanne says, hi, Hannah, and all the Carnation Crafters out there. So lovely that you all say hello to each other as well. Such a lovely little group. Uh, Carol's here. Hi, Carol and Jeanette. So if you do have any questions as we go through, by all means, I always giggle at this point, um, as I always say, do type up your questions in the comments and I will do my very, very best to answer as many as we go along. These Facebook Lives are all about you guys and it's all about that interaction as well. However, you will know if you're familiar with these Facebook Lives, um, <laughs> I a, get very, very distracted by things, uh, which I think we can all, uh, you know, relate to when it comes to crafting. It's like, oh, shiny on my desk. Um, and also because it's just me in my studio working the cameras and the comments and the, you know, angles and all of that sort of thing, it usually descends into some level of chaos. So I do appreciate you always joining me. It's so very sweet of you. Uh, Tina, I've just seen Tina pop up. She's also part of the DT. Hello, lovely. I hope you're feeling well. Um, who else? We've got June's here. Glynis is here as well. Maggie's here. Viv. Suzanne says it's been sunny and cold in Bognor Regis. Well, at least you've had a little bit of sun. I have to say it has absolutely bucketed it down today. Um, myself and, and Simon and uh, Ruben went out for a, a little walk. We're trying to get out and, and get a little bit of fresh air each each morning before we start work. And yeah, I think we might as well have just turned the pram, pram into a boat, really. It was, it was a bit soggy. Uh, Deborah says, howdy from Southern Illinois. Oh, we've gone international. Thank you for joining us, Deborah. Uh, Karen's here as well as Suzanne. Jan is here as well. And Karen... Uh, Trace says, hi, Hannah, winter's coming, uh, time to get thermals out. Do you know what? I think I'm already there. I've kind of got double layer fleece on at the moment sitting in my craft room. I'm so <laughs> it's terrible, really, isn't it? It's absolutely terrible. So, teenage kicks. I love this. This is such a fun, fun, fun little collection. Um, and nice sizes as well. Let me see if I've got something I can do measuring with. Um, so the headphones, if I do that, that will give me a guide are uh, approximately, mm, I'm going to go with just over six inches at their widest point, um, width-wise, and let's have a look, just 
just about six inches, just under six inches at their tallest point as well. So really great for A, making your card shapes from them, which is what we're going to do in this demonstration. I've seen a couple of people asking to, to show how we make card shapes and things. Or equally as good if you want them as a topper on a larger size card, like a 7x7 seven seven or an 8x8, eight eight, for example. The controller, um, <laughs> this is so clever, uh, Nick, our um, creative director, has been so clever with the design of both of these sets, actually, because it's instantly recognisable um, as a games controller. I know that, that sounds like a really strange thing to say, um, but obviously... It's a generic controller, so it could be for any number of the games con consoles out there, be it your PlayStations, your Xbox fans, or your Nintendo fans as well. And any one of those gamers is going to appreciate a card dedicated to them with this controller, and I think it's fabulous. Um, the controller, uh, width-wise, is around about five inches at its widest point, and around about... I do find making noises when I'm measuring does help. Does anyone else get that or is it is it just me? Um, just under three and a quarter inches um, height wise. So that's perfect. If you want to layer it up with the headphones like we're going to do in this demonstration, they work well uh, from a perspective point of view as well. Um, I think what we might do is turn this camera around and let's get started. So where's my button for the cameras? There. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so we've got a top-down view and you can see I've got all my accoutrements ready. I've got a selection of die cuts ready to go as well. And my card sort of design. You'll know when it comes to the Facebook Lives, I do tend to cut out the bases and the layers and things like that. And then just have a selection of die cuts to choose from. This is how I naturally work when it comes to card making. And this is how I create the demos as well. I have a kind of idea where I'm going. Um, but having a selection of die cuts, I mean, for example, I've got dies here from the midi flower arrangements. I've got leaves from the midi flower arrangement die set as well. We've got a few mice making the appearance from crafty little things. Just having a selection of die cuts in front of me gets the creative juices flowing. So it'd be really great to hear how you guys like crafting as well. We're going to do a quick, quick, quick whiz on... Shall I show you some samples? Let's see, let, do you know what we're going to do? Let's show you some samples. Now, you might have seen these already on our social pages. These are our um, designs. Janine, our lead DT, has created some designs, some card designs, um, just for a sort of show and tell, showing you different ways to incorporate the, the Crafter Select dies. So here we've got obviously the little mice, uh, we've got the games controller, we've got the midi floor arrangements, and then this fun kind of stack of nested dies from the crystalline uh, die selection. These are the square, and you'll notice Janine's gone with kind of pink and cream vibe. In the background, Janine has opted to use one of the free-to-download backing papers available for the Teenage Kicks um, bundle as well. So that, that's quite a nice way of including it. And do you see how... Yes, we've gone with a pink theme. Yes, there's flowers on it. Game, I think we have run into this kind of um, narrative where we assume gaming is all about sort of more masculine cards. But as I've already said, I'm a huge gamer. My, my console of choice is the Nintendo and I've, I've gamed ever since I was really, really little. It's such a big thing in our family. Um, so, you know, I would be absolutely delighted to, to receive a card um, along this sort of style. You've got the little mice interacting with the games controller itself. Again, a little bit of fun. It's telling that narrative. It's telling that story. Now, you might notice this little sentiment, new level unlocked in that very atypical um, back to the Atari days, um, <laughs> you know, original kind of ping uh, and Pac-Man design font. Um, what Carnation has actually done for you today is created a whole um, host of Digistamp sentiments um, to work alongside your Teenage Kex collection, which is brilliant. They're all a little bit of fun. Let me show you a few more of them as well, because I have been cutting them out ready for this demonstration. But you've got things on here like To My Favourite Gamer, again, in that atypical font. You've got Have a Royal Birthday, Game On. I mean, that's very reminiscent of... Um, Ready Player One, that sort of thing. 
happy birthday player one you survive next wave is coming it's all these little sort of gamer puns that's going to appeal to anyone within your family or within your life who loves their gaming or indeed you know the head headphones and consoles and things like that um mission complete you gained xp a new adventure awaits you that's a very um kind of typical quote for a lot of games new level loaded congratulations you leveled up these are a lot of fun because these could be for birthdays congratulations you leveled up could mean you've reached a new age you've you've completed one year <laughs> another year on this earth and congratulations you've leveled up it could be new level loaded could be for a wedding card perhaps it's a happy couple you're creating a, a wedding or an anniversary card and they're and they're you're having a little bit of fun with the pun on that. A new adventure awaits you. This could be someone getting into um, a new job, for example, or a new home. It's just a little bit of fun. And these sort of digi stamps, they're uh, free to download, accessible straight away. They are up on the website. What I will do after Facebook Live is pop up a link so you can find them nice and easily. Um, and yeah, it just it just expands your crafting. It gives you fun little sentiments with that that gamer's font to tie in with your card. So we are going to be using the sentiments in there. But I just wanted to touch on where Janine introduced that font and that design from. She's also then created it. I love this. I think this is such a clever use of previous collections here. So here we have the trophy die. This is from the Especially For You die collection. And, you know, you've got the... Um, font here you can obviously type into these these are the editable uh, vignettes that um, were created for this collection and then you've got world's best part of the trophy again the filigree in there the detailing there again the colors this is where carnation come into their own because every single collection because you have this signature theme running through carnation artwork everything's going to tie together everything can be worked together obviously the whole trophy vibe you know you've got um you know you've won your level that sort of vibe going on so it works perfectly with your games controller there and then we've got the midi uh, flowers again this is the lily of the valley and a few little vines and things like that just to decorate around to fill that kind of open space as well perfect for a more masculine card and um, again i've said it before on these facebook lives I think we get so stuck in the narrative that flowers are for girls' cards. We need to step outside the box with that. Flowers are a beautiful embellishment on any card. And I think um, men as well as women will appreciate on their cards. Absolutely. Um, next. Oh, this is this is a great one. This is similar to the card we're going to be making today, actually. So um, this folds flat and you've got your headphones on the top there with all the musical notes on your first easel. And then your second easel sits like so i'll hold it that way i'll have to hold it so you can see it on camera but again you've got this fun way of creating um a stopper as another easel great 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 little design there and again notice you've got the flowers included on here so this is just really pretty really really pretty little card created as i say by janine who is our lead dt for our design team now as i have alluded to we will be creating something similar from, uh, from today's demonstration, the double easel kind of card design. And I will take you through each and every step. What I want to touch on first is where and how we get this artwork for the uh, vignettes. It's called the vignettes, um, how we use that when it comes to the dies. So on to our pro printing paper, you can download from our website, carnationcrafts.co.uk, your artwork your vignettes. We always recommend using the free to download PDF software, Adobe Reader. Um, again, I will pop links up after this demonstration and print on the shiny side of the um, pro printing paper. I'm using mirrored vignettes. So the detail on the front of the design is the same as on the back of the design. All you need to do is fold along that central line easiest way to do it let me actually do it live for you is cut onto the black line that will begin your fold it kind of directs the paper where to go and then cut onto the bottom line there as well now car and i actually had quite an interesting conversation yesterday among many we always have interesting conversations however carla rung and asked how is a really quick and easy way to know which is the shiny side i.e. the side you print on, for pro printing paper. And actually, there's a really great little knack for that. What you can do is, let me grab one actually, bear with. 
Sharpie. Okay. What you can do, if you're not sure of what the smooth side is and what the rough side is, grab a Sharpie and in one corner where it's not going to be um, obvious, it's not going to interrupt with your design or your vignette printing, for example, draw a little line. Okay. You'll feel through the pen itself, which is the rough and which is the smooth. If I now draw on the smooth side, the pen is much smoother and the line is much smoother. That is because the ink is sitting on top of the paper. So you've got smooth side there. You've got no sort of bleed around the edges of the pen. Where you've laid down that ink, it will sit on the surface of the paper. The rough side, you can see it kind of uh, bleeds a little bit. You get more precise colour, more um, depth of colour. Sorry, it's trying to focus the camera on my lines. Come on, little lines. Can I do that? There we go. Do you see the difference? So you've got the smooth side at the top and the rough side at the bottom. A great little way of just telling which is smooth and which is rough by using a Sharpie. So we printed onto the smooth side and we folded exactly along that black line. I'm gonna grab my plates from the die cutting machine using just standard plate combination. What I would do if I was gonna use this um, as a mirrored vignette whereby I want the two sides stuck together. At this stage, I would use a little bit of spray adhesive after I've folded, but before I've cut, then smooth that down, okay? Uh, the spray adhesive I use is, is it that one or that one? Yeah, display mount. It's, you can get it on, on the internet from um, a website that has the same name as a rainforest. So, next up, to cut the die itself. We're gonna just flip our day over and take it out of the little packaging. All you need to do to release the dies from the cardboard on the back is hold the die and peel away the cardboard, okay? Just concentrate your sort of fingers and thumb on where the sticky is itself and ease the die away. If anyone has dexterity problems when it comes to releasing die sets, Use a, either a heat tool or a hairdryer on the back and that will loosen the sticky of the tape for you. I see a lot of comments in group um, where people are struggling to get the, the dies off. Just ease the card away from the die itself. You can then line up like so your design onto the image and you'll notice as you just ease that into place, you've got the same um, amount of bleed, what we call bleed, this sort of halo, if you like, around the die itself, all the way around the die. That ensures you get edge to edge cut, edge to edge colour on your cut. And it also means it helps you align everything precisely. It means all these little notes, all these little filigree bits, all these staves, bars, etc. are all going to cut perfectly. We can then use um, repositionable tape to hold that die um, cutting face down into the paper itself. Uh, the tape I use is a scotch tape. Then slip that over and at this stage, because you're working with a lot of detail uh, design there, what I would recommend, and I say this every time, is cut tidy, okay? Cut tidy we have available in A5 like I have here and in A4. They are essentially like a little pocket that you can pop your die cuts into to give them an extra little shim as they go through your machine. It pushes the paper down into the die and gives you an extraordinary beautiful um, beveled edge, but it will also ensure all this fine detail is cut perfectly. It also then captures all of the little fallout bits as well. Now, a couple of ways of using cut tidy. You'll often see me using it just as a shim. So whereby I open my A5, pop that over the top of the whole entire piece like so, run it through my die cutting machine. However, what you can also do, if you're doing things like paper piecing, for example, where you want to use the off cuts, you can slip it in. So you've got cut tidy on the one side and cut tidy on the other side as well. It creates like a little pocket to put the die into. Many, many people ask us, how do you get a good finish on your die cutting machine? Well, if I bring in my plate, 
<laughs> you can see, you can't see through my plate anymore. That is because I've cut over and over and over and over and over into the into the plate itself. Those marks, if you're not using something like to cut tidy, will transfer onto your paper, okay? Using your cut tidy not only gives you that extra little bit of shim, that extra little bit of pressure as you go through the machine, but it will also um, just make sure you've got a nice clean barrier between what is essentially a dirty cutting plate and your die cut as well. I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine. Standard plate sandwich, we don't have to change anything just because we're using cut tidy. And through the machine it goes. Just gonna have a scroll back, make sure I'm not missing any questions. Let's have a look. Um, a couple of people here saying, uh, Sylvia says, hi Hannah, sorry I'm late. Um, that's fine. Do you know what, Sylvia? It really doesn't matter. What we always do with our Facebook Lives is upload them to both Facebook afterwards and also our YouTube channel so you can watch it back at any time, okay? Now, let's just release this little die cut from our plates. And you can see there, you've got the cutting into on your cut tidy. And you see how it's lifting out? most of the little bits there okay so you've got your initial shim action going on i'm going to gently peel away where we've had the tape attaching the die shape to the paper so i can use that tape again because it's repositionable just like so and then i'm going to use the release holes just to poke and release the rest of that die cut and you can see the other bits of elements of the uh, cutting are just falling away, leaving us absolutely no die cut elements that should be out in the die itself. Absolutely perfect each and every time. Now, it is worth noting, your cut tidy is reusable. Use it over and over and over and over and over again till it literally disintegrates, okay? Um, I did see one comment on our Facebook pages whereby uh, one of our customers, I'm so sorry, I can't remember your name. I think it might have been Ruth, but I'm not 100% sure, um, was making batch making. Um, I think it was Christmas cards. And she said she'd made 70 and was still on the same piece of cut tidy. So that just goes to show it's an incredibly great little product. Also worth noting, because I do like giving you guys a little heads up. It's on deal of the day today. The A4 uh, pack of Cut Tidy is on deal of the day, which is just perfect. Um, so if you wanted to give it a little go, now's the time to grab hold and do it. Just gonna move my mats and layers out so you can see how we're gonna construct this uh, easel card design. And we're gonna start by building our base. So just looking for my die set. To make this easel card, going to be the same process we follow if you watch the the shows we've just done on um coastal currents i did the same demos for color of autumn quite frankly it's the same thing same process no matter what die you're using we are taking the outermost die the biggest die within that pack and we're going to use this to create our card base we are going to cut that from 350 GSM Perfect Smooth cardstock. We want to be building on a really nice heavyweight cardstock base so it's nice and sturdy. We're going to cut it three times. Once for the back of the card, once for the hinge element of the card, and once again for the pop-up aspect of the card. Okay, so you've got three lots on this one to create your easel. Onto the base. We're going to go in with a green colour for our um, perfect papers. I'm not sure, I apologise, I'm not sure which collection this is from. Often if I've only got sort of ones or twos left on my perfect papers, I pop them into my little um, card magazine holders and then use them in projects for Facebook Lives. Um, but we do quite a lovely selection of different green tones for perfect papers. So really any one of them would do. What I've done is cut that same outermost die in this green cardstock and I'm sticking that to my base, my white base, with red liner tape because I'm making construction because I want a nice sturdy base. We've got white on the back and then this lovely green on the front attached using our red liner tape. Next up, another layer. Here, 
we have this fab um, textured paper and you'll notice it's got musical notes all over the background and almost like this shine. Um, it looks kind of like um, sunlight hitting it, it looks slightly fold, it's not, it's literally just cardstock. Um, but this is one of the free to download backing papers for your Teenage Kicks bundle. And I've taken that lighter colour green from the notes and used that as my backing paper in the first map and layer. Okay, so again, that's just a little idea of where we look to for colour inspiration. This layer, again, we are sticking down using finger lift tape. So as you've seen me do previously, I'm taking just one side, folding the carrier sheet over the edge of the backing paper there, just positioning that so you've got the same amount of um, mat and layer all the way around the edge and then peeling off. Now notice I'm only sticking one side down first. I've not released any of the other uh, little bits of carrier papers or anything like that on the other tape, on the other finger lift tape. Once I've got one in place, it leaves me hands free to go in and then take off and stick down. It's just such an easier way of aligning your mats and layers, okay? That particular layer I have cut from uh, 170 GSM Pro Printing Paper. Um, and that again is on uh, high quality print settings and matte photo paper on my Adobe, just to give you a nice high quality definition to your papers. Next layer, okay, this is where we introduce the hinge for our card. So again, out of 350 GSM Perfect Smooth cardstock, we have scored about um, maybe three quarters of an inch on this one, just because half an inch would be only a little bit of a tab on the top. So about three quarters of an inch from the top of the headphone matte layer, and then about halfway. Okay, so this is gonna create our easel. We then have a mountain fold and a mountain fold. And what that means is when this is all stuck in place, this bottom half is gonna pop open to create our pop-up design, okay? Um, again, let's just use the edge of my multimedia mat. I, I love working on these mats because you've got this little uh, recess that you can work in, which means you can butt things up against it, keep it aligned without it shuffling about. It's a silicon mat, so you haven't got a, like a slippery surface to work on. Again, on this hinge, we are working with red liner tape. So again, construction tape um, to ensure it's nice and strong when we're fixing the front of the car to the back. Using my pokey tool just to grab the layer and peel and then smooth that into place. Now I did see a really funny post and it was giving me the giggles um, on our Facebook page, a Facebook group, sorry, Carnation Crafters. Um, I had a piece of red liner tape stuck to my hand <laughs> during the shows on Monday on Create and Craft. And you know what it's like, you can't get rid of it. And the post was in group, What's where's the funniest place that you found red liner tape? Um, and honestly, there were some really, really funny answers. <laughs> So yeah, it's just it just made me smile. So every time I peel away the the red line tape, it just makes me laugh. Um, tips again to stop stop the static on the red line tape. Uh, use a little bit of talc um, on the reels on the edges of the reels. So this bit of the reels, powder it with some talc. Powder it with if you have one of those um, uh, what do you call it shakers um, or anti-static bags. You know what you use for your stamping. You can run those over the edge as well. Um, and then a couple of people are saying you can use, um, sort of lay the uh, reels out on kitchen roll as well. And it will have the sticky from the kitchen roll rather than um, getting the, the static on your hand. These are all great tips. As you can see, mine is still sticking to me. So I've not followed any of that advice, but it is, it is worth doing if they do do my job or do annoy you. Okay, so again, as we've done before, just sticking the two sides, that then allows us hands-free to go in and remove the other bits of carrier sheet for the red liner tape. And notice the red liner tape for this pop-up is literally below the halfway line. That helps us with the uh, mechanism. If we stick obviously the top, your pop-up mechanism for the front of the easel is not gonna work, okay? So again, burnishing that down so it's all nice and smooth. And there we have your easel effect card. I love an easel. I think they're such a lovely, um, dramatic kind of card shape and actually it's great because you're creating this idea where you can view it's almost like a piece of artwork on the top layer 
onto this again same mats and layers that we've used in the bases and this time around I'm going to mount the light green layer from Perfect Smooth Car uh, Perfect Papers on one mil foam so nice one mil foam I'm not going to stick all of them most of these are going to act as like bolsters to stop the middle of the card sagging so it's just really the edges we want to stick in place again just I suppose I could actually do it along the side there just aligning oh don't do it morph please don't do it <laughs> honestly cat right go down see i told you i told you these facebook lives always descend into chaos apologies that is morph the cat just trying to get involved <laughs> Oh, dearie me, I hope no one from the office is watching this today. <sighs> okay, so, foam tape, one mil foam tape. Just sticking that one side, exactly the same as what we've done before. And then we can go in hands-free and stick the other middle and the side, letting those two smaller bits work as your little bolster. So they're just holding up the other bits of card. This is creating a really lovely sturdy base onto which we can start crafting our designs. Obviously we want to be loading up with lots of flowers and obviously our headphones and our controller and leaves and all sorts of things depending on what we want to create. So having a nice sturdy base is great. Um, but also it means um, it gives you a little bit more of a luxury feel to your card. You've not got any elements that are going to bend so it doesn't look flimsy. Um, Margaret says... <laughs> Oh, goodness me, Morphe Cat. Margaret says Morphe is getting huge. And, and Michelle says, bless him, he just has to take part. He just has to get involved all the time, don't you? That's because he's so used, don't do it that way. He's so used when I'm crafting to sitting with me that he doesn't quite understand that um, <laughs> i trying to do a demonstration live. Honestly, it's just, sorry guys about that. I know you love seeing him, so I don't, I don't feel too bad. But he's just been a monkey. Oh, he's just spotted a spider, so he's off now. He should be, he should be, yeah, yeah, he should be distracted for the rest of the show now, which is really good. You you crack on, Morphe. Well done, mate. Okay, next layer. Again, same as what we've done on the inside as in the card. Um, and we are going in with this mutton layer cut from the same backing paper, that wonderful green musical note paper, and sticking that in place like so. Once again, just sticking the one side which allows us hands-free to go in and peel away these other two foam layers. And that means they all become situated in exactly the right place, like so. It's worth taking your time over things like that because it's, it's just a lovely, lovely feeling when you've got this sort of layers going on in your card. Um, Tracy says, my cat is always doing this with me. <laughs> I'm glad you guys can understand, <laughs> understand the, the level of... Uh, pet ownership we have going on over here bless him yeah you just chase that spider my 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 friend that's fine uh, michelle says we don't mind thank you michelle i do appreciate that once we introduce the headphones look how this card really comes to life having that deep green on the background as well as that sort of texture of the mu music notes is then repeated in the vignette with your music notes in this heart shape this kind of flowing vibe it's almost like the music's come to life it's coming out of the headphones looks beautiful just just so beautiful and it just creates it's just such a a wonderful look to the front of your card it really pops now you notice um the one i cut earlier is in black and the one i'm using for the demonstration is in this kind of white gray you've got both the vignettes you've got both the colorways in both the controller let me just show you that this one. controller in black and also in white so you've got options on how you want to style your cards for teenage kicks I've gone with the white option. Um, I wanted something a little bit more subtle and I felt the white perhaps just went into the background a little bit more because then we're going to load up with the flowers and things like that. If you want more of an impact on your design, go for the black. You know, it's totally up to you. I am just going to grab my dense foam mat and my ball tools and give a tiny little bit of shaping to that almost like foamy bit of the headphones that goes over the ears. And I'm just following cut line details and the detailing on the vignette 
and shaping those out. I'm not going to add shape to any, any other part of it. It's just this little puffy bit. So I started with the larger size ball tool and I'm concentrating that along the middle of the earphone and then we're going down to the smaller size as well. That just then gives you that more rounded look to your headphones. Subtle, but enough just to, again, add a little bit more interest. This I'm going to stick in place using um, the pin flare glue gel along the puffy bit we've just made. Like so. A little bit on the heart and then a tiny bit along the top of the headphones as well. It is worth noting, if you haven't seen the other Facebook Lives, uh, we do now stock the Pim Flare Glue Gel on the Carnation Crafts website as well, so it's a great time to add to your basket and check out should you wish to. Uh, Michelle says here, I also brought the other colour collections. They are lovely colours. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, with our vignettes, we do offer you the um, original colourways, the ones I'm working with here and what I always demo with for free. Uh, we do then do uh, additional colourways that you can purchase and add to your collection should you wish to as well. So the Pin Flare Glue Gel is just going to lift those headphones a little bit so you get a nice drop shadow behind them. You can absolutely use foam again if you prefer. I do like working with the Pin Flare because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room as well. Now, as you've just seen, we need something to keep this card design open. And I did hint at the fact we are going to go down this similar sort of route that Janine has created and create this sort of double stepper, uh, double stepper, double easel design. So the controller is going to be another easel within the easel of the card. It's going to open my card fully. And I'm going to repeat that same process we've just done for the headphones as the controller. OK, so this... I'm just going to nestle in into an area where I know it's going to sit beautifully and kind of hold it just making sure it will then work well as a stopper if I place it there. So again, I cut the uh, outermost die from the controllers, the outermost matte layer from the controller in 350 GSM. Remember, we're working with a nice heavyweight card stock there because we're working with construction. We've scored half an inch down from one side and red liner tape to stick to the bottom like so. We've then scored halfway on the controller as well, both mounting folds so you get this pop-up effect. And then we've cut that same outermost die again from white, 350 GSM, perfect smooth. Again, holding that in place, just as we take off one carrier sheet for the red liner tape, smooth that into place, and then just sort of turning my card so I can access the other little side, oops, like so, and smooth that into place. Same thing again, we only got the red liner tape. See, look, sticking to me, sticking to me again. Red liner tape on the bottom of the um, score line. So we create this pop-up effect. And now when we open the card, this controller is gonna be a stopper for the headphone set behind it, okay? Um, because of the angling, actually, this is probably going to stay open anyway, but we are going to add a few little details just on the inside of the card to keep that stopper open as well. Again, just to draw in those same colour tones as we have on the um, card base itself, rather than this kind of stark white, we're going to go in with the same green we used in the mats and layers for the headphones. And let's just find a little area like so. This is the one mil foam tape. And I've cut that from the same size as the white layer, covering it up. And you see how now it just blends into the background. It's not this obvious stark white as it was before. Sticking just the one side down, then going in and removing our other bits too. I can't see any questions coming in. So hopefully uh, by talking through every sort of layer of this card construction, it is all making sense. If you do have any questions, by all means, type them up and I will do my level best to answer them. The, the Facebook Lives and things are a really great opportunity because when we're demonstrating on air, on Create and Craft, we have a limited amount of time and we have a certain amount of things we have to show you um, to a, um, ensure that you guys are getting you know a really great overview of the kits we're selling, um, but to make sure we're touching on every point of the kit as well. Having these Facebook Lives where we can go into much greater detail just allows a little bit more uh, time for inspiration as well, which um, which hopefully you guys are enjoying. 
Now, that being said, we have actually popped a post up in the uh, Facebook group, Carnation Crafters. Um, myself and the team are working on themes and um, things for future Facebook Live demonstrations. So I have popped up a little post saying, you know, is there anything you'd like to see from future Facebook Lives? Let us know, comment below. And what we can do is look to perhaps include them or something similar um, in upcoming Facebook Live. So if you just let us know, we can obviously try and plan those in for you as well. And you can head over to our Facebook group, Carnation Crafters, and it will be uh, the topmost pinned announcement um, on the page itself. Okay, so if you if you have got anything <laughs> you want, want to see, now's the time to put your requests in just as we're building the new Facebook Lives. Uh, Michelle says, I think we're all just so engrossed in what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Do you know what, Michelle? It's actually really hard sometimes to demo and talk because you do kind of get lost in the making of it. Um, card making is such a relaxing process that you do kind of get lost in this world of creation. Here, what we're doing is taking uh, the uh, dense foam mat again and the ball tool. And we're concentrating on areas whereby there would be a little bit more height and dimension. So we're using appropriate size ball tools to give those areas a little bit more prominence. And what we're doing is pushing them out. Not obviously loads and loads, but just a little bit, rounding off areas, following that artwork detail to create a more three-dimensional look to your design, okay? Just popping through these elements like so. That means when we come to stick our die cut down, you've got this more um, three-dimensional feel to it. It brings it to life more. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to place that on the inside for now. I'm not going to necessarily stick that because I'm going to work on the top and I don't want to squish the glue out of the sides. But I do feel like the card itself needs a little bit of pop of colour. Now, if you were um, creating something whereby you didn't want flowers or anything like that, you could just leave it as it is. Perhaps you then want to introduce uh, one of the uh, Digi Stamp sentiments. This one says, new level unlocked. That's a lot of fun. Um, or we could have it on the inside of the card and your card would be good to go. Um, but being a Facebook Live and wanting to bring you lots of inspiration, I think it's nice to then embellish these further. So you do have options with these. It could be if you're creating for a, for a little boy or a teenager or something like that, you could go in with this idea that there are little mice are all involved with the making of these headphones. Perhaps you've got the mouse there trying to lift the heart out of the center. Perhaps he's lifting the headphones themselves from one side. I mean, that's quite sweet. Perhaps you've got one of the other little mice almost dancing, you know, to the tune of the, the music that's coming out of the headphones. Perhaps on the inside of your card, you're gonna have a mouse staring intently at the buttons, <laughs> you know? Or perhaps you've got another little mouse who is uh, one of those really um, into it gamers who has to read the instruction manuals back to front before they even press start on their games. You know, it's that sort of storytelling vibe. Again, you could go in with your sentiment and that would be your card finished too. The little mice there are all characters from our Crafty Little Things collection. But what I would like to do I think it's a bit of fun is we're going to use our mice and we're going to use some flowers as well to tell this story so I've grabbed a few die cuts from the uh, midi floral uh, arrangements sets one and sets two uh, sorry I knocked the camera there um, and these are cut from the especially for you uh, vignette colorway so there's three colorways for um, the midi florals. Uh, one, this one, especially for you, is a nice bright uh, finish. And I just love the pink. I felt the pink worked so beautifully with the green in the background. But then you have the um, colorway for Above the Clouds, which is a more muted color tone. And then also Fairy, Day, Fairy Tale Day colorway as well, which is, is fun too. We then have leaves, twizzly bits, textured bits, all sorts of things. So remember, as I say, whenever I'm bringing you these Facebook Lives, I do tend to just go in, cut lots and lots of things, and then see what I'd like to use when it comes to the finished card. Janet says the control die is out of stock. Oh, Janet, I'm really sorry. It must've been incredibly popular when, when it launched. Um, my apologies, I'm, I will hopefully hear from the team. If they are watching, perhaps they can let us know uh, when, if they expect more stock 
for the controller dissect. Okay, so let's have a little look. How do we want these flowers to sit? Let's possibly have them along the edge. That would be quite nice. Perhaps they're coming tumbling one way or the other. Perhaps we want to build a little bit of a base like that. Maybe we want to introduce some of the daisies to break up between the pink and the green as well. Again, we often say it and we say it in so many shows and things like that. Layering is key when it comes to florals because they are a lot of fun. And in nature, they would be layered anyway. Okay, so don't ever be afraid of covering die cuts up with other die cuts. It's all part of the fun and the process. So I think maybe something along those sort of lines um, with the various pinks and, and whites there. But let's just start snipping, tucking and see where we get to with these. Because remember, when it comes to carnation crafts, you are not bound to have to use the die cuts exactly as they cut. You are more than welcome to snip into them and adjust them for your designs. OK, so I'm just going to cut away the two flowers there. I didn't want the die cut to be so big for this section. And then that is possibly going to go somewhere like that. I don't mind the leaves sort of escaping over the edge. I do think I'd like a little bit of greenery just in the background there to add another texture. Definitely one of the daisies because I think that's really, really pretty like so. And then we're going to start snipping into this little beauty as well. This is um, just little white, white, pretty little textured elements. Um, but look how it adds in just another dimension to your, your tuck designs, to your card designs there as well. Uh, let's snip off, let's snip off that little bit there. What I'd recommend if you're looking to snip tuck and all that sort of thing with your designs is have a nice generous amount of die cuts out in front of you because, you know, Anything you don't use can just go into your stash for another day. It's not going to be wasted. It's not going to be um, ruined or anything like that. It just simply goes in for another day. But it does mean you've got options there uh, for snippability and how things work together as well. Once we've come up with a rough idea of how these are going to be placed and how these are going to work, like so, kind of just going around the edge of that heart, remembering I do want to include my little mice dancing on the notes as well. Once we're happy with the layout, we can then commit to sticking these down. As you saw with the controller and the headphones, I'm not going to stick them flat. I'm going to give them a little bit of shaping and things like the leaves. You can shape with your pokey tool as well. Um, Viv says, I love all the little mice. They're so cheeky. They really are, aren't they? They've really got their own little personalities there. I think they're a lot of fun. Uh, Sylvia says, loving your demo, watching whilst I'm baking. Oh, lovely, Sylvia. What are you baking? I'd love to know these things. That's quite nosy, isn't it? Sorry, I shouldn't I shouldn't probably ask, but I'd love to know these things, what you guys are up to, uh, whilst we're sat here creating little demos and that as well. Okay, so those go in place there. Let's have these leaves tucked behind. I might just trim these down. Again, remember, you don't have to use them as this. Oh, and look what I can include. This excites me greatly. It's Wednesday. So I'm going to use my everyday glue for my Wednesday glue. <laughs> it's just a little bit of fun. We have a set of new glues, everyday glues. Um, it's a little sort of take on the name everyday glue. Um, we have an everyday glue for every day of the week. So today's Wednesday. So I'm using my Wednesday glue. It makes total sense to us at Carnation. It's just our little sense of humour as well. Um, little glue applicators I'm going to be using to stick these in place. I have been reliably informed by the team in the office they are due in. I'm guessing now, because I've been on holiday for a week, I would think they're probably only two or three weeks away now. But what I'd recommend is do consider signing up to the um, email newsletter if you haven't done so already, because that will give you um, a little heads up of new stock and things like that. Sylvia's making carrot cake. Beautiful, Sylvia. If you could send some my way, I would be very much appreciative of that. <laughs> okay, just lifting and tucking. So by adding that white between the leaves and the background of the uh, backing papers there, you're breaking up that green. It instantly makes the leaves on the flowers pop and it gives them a, their own little bit of added interest. Same with this little daisy, okay, because the daisy is also white, that's going to break up this sort of expanse of green we're going on and allow the pinks to pop also. Just going to twist and turn those leaves. Remember, we don't stick anything down flat if we can help it. We want to give those a bit of shape and dimension. 
and a little bit of pin flare. Now, pin flare is absolutely my um, go to glue of choice when it comes to adding dimension. Reason being is it dries clear, uh, which for someone like me who makes an absolute mess with their glue is absolutely uh, just perfect um, but it also allows us wiggle room so if we are crafting and we change our minds or you want to little sort of tuck ins like I do with the, the leaves and stuff it's really important to have that option to then change things up things like the leaves you'll notice I'm only putting a little bit of glue just on the end reason being the rest of the die cut is then free if you get a little bit of breeze or the person's holding and moving the card you get a little bit of movement from the die cuts as well and again it just adds to that interest factor to your card designs a little bit of tuck there where's my other little snippings snippings for my texture like so again same thing with these just glue just on the ends and then lifting and tucking as we go Position these at different levels. Um, so again, it looks like a more realistic bouquet. Please don't walk on this nail morph because, because you're gonna squish the glue, aren't you? Hey, we don't want cats in glue, do we? No, good boy, off you go, that's it, good boy. Just sit down. Um, and also the rose and things like that. It looks like a real bouquet if you spend the time just adding in elements as we go, lifting, tucking, and enjoying the process of making. Now I'm using also um, smaller little uh, die cuts, <laughs> don't throw things, um, on here as well. So you've got sort of the larger size flowers and then the little motif ones as well. Again, it just adds to that intricacy of the design. And remember the rule of three. If you place something down, do consider having elements of that repeated elsewhere in odd numbers. The eye likes to find a center of a design. Let's just pop that in and then tuck so again you're breaking up that pink with a little bit of green and it instantly looks more realistic very very pretty design i think i'm going to use another daisy just like so and twist and tuck don't eat that darling and just twist and tuck as well and it could be over the top but i think I think I'm going to go base again. So again, just lifting those other elements up to pop the daisy in, using it more as a as a kind of break from the green of the background, just giving you a hint of colour and design detail, like so. Morphe, honestly, honestly, Catty, go down. Oh, there you go. Um, I do want just another little bit of the white. So again, you've got that. That's remember that rule of three. Also, a good thing to consider is triangles, okay? So you've got white, white, we need a white down here, and we've got leaf, leaf, and leaf. Again, it just makes sense when you, the eye is coming to view these things. It just gives it a little bit more of a clarity and a direction in which it can view. Just little design things. Um, you'll, see, you'll hear me repeat them often in these Facebook Live demonstrations. <laughs> Michelle says, Morphe stealing the show he is he's just he's a just law unto himself really yeah he just likes getting involved and you know what i wouldn't have it any other way he's a he's such a sweet loving cat that i know i should probably chastise him but you know what he can really do what he wants he's he's gorgeous love him to bits so there we have a nice little selection of flowers on the front it's not overwhelming it's pretty but it's not detracting from the idea that we're going in with our headphones and things like that now because we created that on the front, we want to do something similar on the inside. So now we're going to commit to sticking our controller down because we're not going to squidge this now we're working on the inside of the card. And I'm just popping a little bit of glue just in areas where we need the lift from the pin flare, like so. Once again, those mats and layers are designed to hug our detail dies perfectly. So as we place that down, you can see you've just got this beautiful edge to that controller design. Now we want our controller to sit like so, and I'm thinking I might put either sentiment on the inside or I might tuck it into the flowers. I'm kind of just hedging my bets at the moment because I do feel it might look quite fun tucked in behind the flowers as well. It might end up on the front of the card, you know, 
We'll see at the end. We've got time with the pin flare to have a little play. Um, again, another perfect way of using these things. Um, let's have a look. Let's try and create something similar to what we have on the outside of the card on the inside as well. So here we've got our flowers that we used as our core middle section. And once again, I'm going to trim those away just so they're slightly smaller and more in keeping with the proportions of this card that we are creating. Just snipping away the vines and then the other side to the flower like so. And it might be that I want to then create more of a sort of greenery on this. So what we could do is just trim away that flower as well and tuck these leaves in underneath the main um, focal point of my die cut. Again, it's, it's just all options. It's how you want to create with these things. Uh, Steve says, brilliant ideas for teens and gamers. Yeah, it absolutely is. These die sets are designed for that, but remember there are gamers of all ages and yeah, this is, this is a lot of fun, especially with those new uh, digi stamp sentiments as well just gives you a really fun way of crafting with them too. Now, how do we want these other leaves to sit? Perhaps we want them like so. That looks quite fun. I quite like that orientation. It's slightly different to the outside. It kind of comes down this little corner as well. I think let's go with that. Again, we can always change it up because we're using plume flesh should we wish to. And we're just concentrating our glue onto the center of those flowers there. Same with these little leaves. I'm going to slip away that outer one because I think that's going to end up behind the controller anyway. Just following the cut line details that are already laid down and then twisting and turning them over my pokey tool to give them that lift, to give them that, that shape and that feel like they are a real leaf. I mean, the artwork in its own right makes them look real, doesn't it? But let's face it, Nick and his um, team are incredible at what they do. But I think just by adding in that texture as well, just takes it to another level there. Now, I'm very aware that we need to create almost like a little stopper out of, oops, these flowers. Sorry, I just squidged that controller just a little bit over the top there, Hannah. Let's just ease that back into place. I got a bit over enthusiastic with my squidging there. Um, I might end up using a little bit of foam on one of the flowers onto the glued elements to work as a stopper because then it's going to give it more height and, and more stability. So I might do that. Where is my foam? There it is. So one mil foam tape. Just going to snip a section and then in half again. Normally, as you've seen, I will stick most of my elements down using a uh, pin flare, but for things like this, just because I need it to stand up and sh to show you guys, I will just for this time consider popping that little bit on foam to work as my stopper as well. So that can sit over the base flowers that we've already put down in place. And now you've got an area whereby it's catching that corner edge of our controller and keeping that card nice and open there as well. Um, really, it doesn't need many more flowers, I don't think, in this bottom corner, but I'm gonna add a few anyway. I'm just gonna tuck those leaves back in because I knocked them a minute ago. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, where are my leaves? A few little textures going in. Just a hint at the same sort of leaf designs as what we've used on the outside of the card. Again, it's about keeping that story flowing between the outside and the inside of the card. Um, another way Carnation have done that on their, their new collections, uh, both for Colour of Autumn and also the one we've just done, which is Coastal Currents. Um, the backing papers have been recreated as a set of inserts as well. So you do have options on those, those new collections to download the inserts too, which gives you more, more craftability there as well. So here we're just sticking those textured leaves again, following the curve that's laid down for this headphone, this, this kind of matte and layer design here. Um, twisting and turning the leaves, they have a different orientation as well. Uh, let's go in with a few of the little, um, I, don't know, I don't even know what flowers these are. Um, I don't know what you'd call them, but I think they're very pretty. 
and they are ideal for your little tuck-ins but again just mirroring what we've done on the outside of the card there i might snip that down further actually and then oops just dab a little bit of the everyday wednesday glue underneath like so just to break that pink up again do you see how by adding lighter colors it makes the colors pop perfectly uh, let's go in with a little little snippet of that underneath that side as well just a little bit of glue tucking like so and then one more just because I am very keen on this rule of three tiny tiny little cut in anywhere we've snipped away we're just going to round off with our scissors just to give that a more natural edge rather than any harsh lines being present present in the the finished product it's just these little bits of attention to detail which which will finish your cards beautifully and then this little edge just a little bit of glue on there tiniest little tuck in underneath that element again rule of three creating that triangle with the white around that side i think that really is all that little side needs i'm going to turn my attention to the front of the card again just so i can choose placement in essence for the sentiment and i am keen to get it in behind those flowers i think that's a nice place for it to sit i'm just going to lift my controller gently underneath to give me the room to stick and normally with a sentiment like this, I would stick with foam tape, but because I want to slide it in between the flowers, behind the flowers, red liner tape getting everywhere again, I'm going to use a little bit of pin flare. So I've got a little bit of lift, but it also gives me a little bit of time to play. So I'm going to lift that daisy, and come in like so, just possibly squidging that down a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a nice placement for it. Just touching the top of those headphones, like so. So again, by squidging the sentiment in behind the flowers, it gives it a focal point. You've got a focal area of the, the flowers coming into the, the sentiment there. The sentiment looks like it's more naturally placed. A little bit like how you tuck in, at, you know, the cards you get in bouquets with the messages on. It's that same sort of idea. It's that same sort of feeling. And then by having it overstretched and just touching on the edge of the headphones here and on the edge of the headphones there, it doesn't look forced. It doesn't like look like you're trying too hard to kind of cram that into the design itself. Um, and again, the rest of the flowers there, because we've kind of angled it at a layer, are just kind of around and underneath the sentiment too, which I think is a lot of fun. Again, at this stage, you could absolutely call that card done. Now, my little flowers there are having a little escape moment because they're on that glue. So I'm going to have to hold the card open rather than just rely on the stopper too, too greatly. Come on, you. Everything is still a little bit wet to be attentively trying that. But I am opening and just checking placement and how everything is sitting each, each element of the way. Now I do think it's gonna be fun to have perhaps a little mouse on our controller as well. But I do like this idea that you're gonna open the card and discover the little mice at work rather than having them on the outside of the card as well. Totally optional, it's how you want to work with your card designs. I am going to include them because I just think they're a lot of fun. Um, they're very, um, very carnation, the look and the feel of them. And again, we can make them nice and round on a dense foam mat with our ball tool. So little squidgy tummy here, the little head, and then going down in size on ball tools just to ball out those little ears like so just love those mice uh where's my other little mouse oh he's disappeared he's run off cheeky little mice i'm sure he will come to to the forefront at some point where have you gone little mouse there you are hiding from me again gonna ball him out as well just like so. Again, it's all the storytelling with Carnation, which I think brings these cards to life. They're a lot of fun. They're very sweet, but they are just something a little bit different as well. So we're going to have a mouse over the edge of the controller there. 
and I am going to have to reload on my pin flare, which again is a great little demonstration to be able to bring you. Your syringes are reusable. All you need to do is pull the plunger and then wiggle to remove. If you have got any sort of stringy bits of dried glue, just go in either with one of your glue applicators or the end of a poke tool and just scoop those out. Uh, something like a baby wipe, for example, would be would be good to do that. It just stops anything um, then bunging up when you put new glue in, any dried bits of glue getting down into the bottom of the syringe there and, and plugging that hole up so it doesn't interrupt with the glue, the flow of the glue. We're then gonna use the tube holding the syringe onto the tube. I have got um, a little key, same sort of thing as what you'd find on your corned beef, just to squidge that glue in. Rather than just then taking it off, remember it's glue, it's sticky, it's gonna, it's gonna go. You then scrape like so. You're scraping the edge of the tube against the edge of the um, syringe. It cuts off the glue and keeps it neatly within your syringe there. Then you just need to find the plunger and pop that back in. Now, what I'd always recommend when you're working with your glue, only put in as much as you need for your projects. Um, and that saves anything drying hard in the tube. So here we're going to just squidge in a little bit on our tummy and our head for our middle nicey mousey. And she's going to be sitting on the other side of the controller, almost having a little dance, almost perhaps looking at, you know how when you really I can't... I didn't get that. Could you try again? Or we could just get interrupted by Siri. So this little mouse is looking at the television that she's playing her game on, or he. His hands are up on the controller, but his little tongue is sticking out. The level of concentration when you're trying to line up something in a puzzle game, for example, is that sort of thing, that little look with the mouse. When you're finished with your uh, pin flare, you do have your little um, caps, your little uh, yellow caps here. Rather than just putting the cap straight on, squidge a little bit of pin flare out of the end. Okay, of the syringe, like so, and then pop your cap on. That little end will then dry when you come to use it for the next time, and it acts as a little cork. All you then need to do is then take a little um, tweezers or a pokey tool, pull that little end out. It will probably come up to about here, and it saves the rest of your glue drying in the tube by having that little end poking out. Um, Maggie says, Hannah, did you say you print on the shiny side of the pro printer paper? Yes, absolutely. That is completely correct. Um, what um, we do have our guides on the website. We have video uh, tutorials on our, our YouTube page when it comes to um, what side to print on, how to find it. And we did demonstrate that at the very start of this video. So it would be worth just checking back um, at the end just to then view that as well, Maggie, because we've got a little tip on how to tell which is the shiny side and which is the matte side. Um, Jenny says, is Carla okay? Haven't seen her re-entry. Um, I'm not I'm not sure what what that means. Carla's fine. She's going to be on air on Thursday with more of the um, Coastal Currents demos and Friday as well. Oh, sorry, Jenny, you've texted again. Uh, is Carla okay? I haven't seen her lately. That makes more sense than re-entry because, um, yeah, I think we've just gone off. Have we just gone off? Have we just gone off? Or are we still live? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so cold. I'm sat with my hood up. Hopefully we're still live. I don't know what happened there. The whole screen went black. So I'm hoping we're still live. I'm going to carry on as if we are. Um, apologies. If we're not, not that you're going to hear me say that. But anyway, we have finished our car, so it's at least that. Here we have the finished example. What I will do at the end of the demonstration is, of course, take photographs. Uh, so if you want to recreate this exact card um, in all its glory, you are more than welcome to do so. We have a completely open angel policy, so you can just make this and sell this if you want to make and sell as much as you like when it comes to carnation crafts. Um, Oh, Margaret says I am there. That is a relief. Honestly, I don't know what happened there. Me and technology is just a nightmare. Um, but I will take photographs. I'll pop up the links um, for all the things I've mentioned during the Facebook Live, if I can remember any of them. <laughs> the screen going black just completely threw me. Um, hopefully you found that 
useful, interesting, inspirational even, dare I say it. Um, if you haven't done so already, please do consider joining our Facebook group, Carnation Crafters. We have got a little post up in there. So if there is anything you want to see, any particular dye collections you want demonstrated or tutorials, for example, do let us know and do try if you if you can be as specific as possible because it just um makes our life easy when we, when we're trying to put together facebook lives for you as well because we know we're then hitting the right notes when it comes to the collections you want to see um and says yeah we're fine scream at black for a second i don't know what that was perhaps perhaps morph playing around who knows <laughs> All that's left to say is thank you ever so much for joining us this afternoon on today's Facebook Live. Uh, we will be back next week. Uh, we're still deciding what we're going to do, I think. Um, so, yeah, again, let me know in, in the comments what you'd like to see. Um, and Carla will be back on your screens tomorrow and on Friday with more demonstrations and inspiration featuring the Coastal Currents collection. Thank you once again, everyone. Take care, keep safe, keep well, and I shall see you all very soon. Bye-bye.